Every control software in astrophotography has its own little quirks. The ASI Air is no different. In this video, we are going over five different tips you can use with the ASI Air. And the first one is more geared for DSLR users. Now, DSLRs sometimes have a problem where they won't connect or it'll drop connection or it'll take a shot and then just stop. And the way to fix this is to make sure your camera is set right. So on your DSLR, you need to make sure that it is set to bulb mode and you need to make sure that it is in manual mode and the big one is to make sure that it is in RAW only. If it is in RAW plus JPEG, sometimes it'll drop connection. The one I've experienced the most is it'll take a shot, say during polar alignment, and then it won't shoot again. Okay, so make sure it is in RAW only. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astro Escape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there, all to help you escape the day-to-day -day and image the night. If you like what you see as you're watching this video, please, please do consider giving this one a like. Let's keep going. Now the next tip for you is for focusing. And you can get started a little bit before dark and it'll just help speed things up. That way when astronomical twilight is just about over, you can get your polar alignment done quicker. So what you wanna do is in the app, set the app to video mode. This'll treat it just like using a DSLR's LCD screen. Now this sounds more like it is primarily for dedicated astrophotography camera users, but DSLR users, if you have a flip out screen that you can hide, you can use this just to keep your screen hidden just to not spill any light anywhere. But in the app, if you go into video mode and then just find something off in the distance and focus there, you can get very close to being perfectly focused. And a tip here too for your guide camera is unplug the main camera after you're done focusing that and switch the guide camera to be the main camera in the app set it to video mode again and focus that as well. I gotta tell you, using the ASI 120 mini as my guide cam and the scope that comes with it, focusing that thing is a little bit finicky if you're doing shot after shot after shot, but in video mode, it is just a hundred times easier. After you're done getting your close focus before it gets dark, switch the cameras back, and then after that, wait for it to get dark, you'll be close enough you can get your polar alignment out of the way, and then switch to the star you usually choose to focus, put your Batonov mask on, and go from there. And speaking of the Batonov mask, if you focus while the Batonov mask is on in video mode, you can watch the spike move up and down to help you center, that way you're not taking a shot going, oh crap, I need to move, and then taking another shot, oh crap, I need to move. It is just one fluid motion and just speeds the process up. All right, so this next tip is about controlling things, specifically if you use a hand controller. Now on the ASI Air website, they recommend that you plug the hand controller into the mount normally, and then you use a USB cable to go from the controller to the ASI Air itself. I gotta tell you, this method kinda sucks. I'm not gonna be any kind of graceful about it. It's bad. Uh, plenty of times when I was out there using it that way, it would slew to the target, but then for some reason during the process, the connection to the hand controller would stop and then it would just slowly slew off target completely and not even bother guiding. So what you wanna do here is actually just avoid it altogether and get an EQ mod cable. Using an EQ mod cable goes straight from the mount to the ASI Air, completely bypassing it, and the ASI Air has full control over everything. And if you wanna know the one that I use, it is linked down in the description below. And hey, speaking of controlling things, you don't need to stay glued to it once you get things going. Once you get the program rolling on whatever your image is for the night, you can close the app, go inside, and do whatever it else is you wanna do for the night. So for example, if you had to work the next day and you needed to go to bed, but you still had time to grab your stuff in the morning, it's perfect. Get it running, go in, go to bed. The only thing you might still wanna do though is just time it for when the meridian flip happens. Just go out and check on it. And then once it seems like it's running fine again, go back to sleep. Beyond that, the only thing you really need to do is when you're setting up your plan, before saying go, make sure that it returns the mount to home position and turns it off when you're done. That way it doesn't keep slewing and end up hitting itself uh, before you can get out there and tear everything down. Now keep in mind the new plan mode that came out, this also applies as well. So once it's done bouncing around to different targets, if you tell it to do two or three at night, it'll go to home and shut off. All right, and this tip here is about taking flats. Taking flats used to be a chore. You used to have to play around and look at each exposure until you got it just right with your flats. Now, however, if you're wondering how to take flats with the ASI Air, all you do 
is go into the planning mode and tell it you're taking flats and then just leave it at auto. This basically treats it like it is a DSLR using AV mode and it will calculate the correct exposure needed to take a proper flat. Now, as long as you keep your light source to take that flat dim enough that the flats last at least a couple seconds, you'll get good data. If the flats are less than say two seconds, any faster than that, you need to dim, out, dim your light source a little bit. One of the other things about taking flats is that at the time of this recording, when you take your flats, you have to go into the folder that it's saved in and look at the time on your flat. You're gonna need that for your dark flat frames. However, keep an eye on updates because people are recommending that they add a good way for us to see what auto mode set it to. That way when we do the dark flats, we know what to set it to or add a dark flat mode based on what the flats were. And yes, they are listening and there are some things planned. Hey, since I mentioned that the devs listen to requests and are implementing some of those features, if you already use the ASIR, what's on your wish list? Let me know down in the comments below. Red mode, please. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.